How's it going, Jets fans? It's Ryan Moran and Ali Ashraf here from Fireside Jets, coming to you today with a top 10 players that the Jets had in 2022, a little bit of a review from some of the Jets' best players highlighting their success this year. Uh, as Ali and I were saying beforehand here, I mean, there were a lot of players who were very deserving, and I think while it's frustrating that the Jets ended the year 7-10, missed the playoffs, lost that last six games, um, there is a, a whole lot of talent on this team that I think, in compared to years past, they really didn't have, so... You know, we're going to go over our top 10 players today, and we're going to start it out here with a couple of honorable mentions. Like we said, there were a lot of players who were more than deserving of being on this list. And the three honorable mentions I had, uh, the first one being Carl Lawson, you know, seven sacks, 49 pressures this year, coming off, you know, that season ending injury there in the summer of 2021. Um, it maybe wasn't as, you know, forceful of an impact as we'd hoped for from the edge, but I think just from a statistical standpoint, I mean, Lawson just gave the Jets some of the best, you know, defensive end outside linebacker pass rushing production they've had in a really long time. Like I said, nearly 50 pressures. You know, the seven sacks for Lawson is a pretty good amount when you look at his career. So I thought he was someone who was just on the cusp there. Uh, another one, another D end here for me, Bryce Huff. You know, I think a guy most Jeff fans grew to love this year in his third season. Uh, had 36 pressures, three and a half sacks, and only played 20% of the Jets' defensive snaps this year. And if you recall, he was obviously inactive the first three games of the season, which is quite a you know mismanaged decision when you look back on it now. Um, Huff is another very, just very gifted pass rusher, right? The first step get off. I mean, he's so fast. He's got speed. He's got you know that bend at the top of the rush, and he's got a, you know an arsenal of moves in his package that he can win with. So. Really excited about Huff moving forward. And the final honorable mention here, before I give it to you here, Ali, that I wanted to mention was just Justin Hardy. I think a guy who his leadership, obviously the captain on special teams the last two years, a guy with the intangibles, just the you know presence, the fire about him that I think really rubs off on the team well. You know, he was a pro bowler this year, which was deserved, obviously, for his coverage on special teams as a punk gunner. And uh, the players' first team all, li all, all pro list, he made that. You know, he didn't make the AP official one. But, uh, you know, the players around the league clearly respect Hardy and, you know, for good reason. I mean, he's a guy who just plays with his heart out on special teams for the Jets. And with somebody, you know, with his accolades this year, I thought was, you know, just deserving of an honorable mention here. So, who, Ali, who were some of your, you know, honorable mentions and guys who just missed the cut for you? Yeah, um, I had two of the same for honorable mentions of Carl Lawson and uh, Bryce Huff. Uh, both those guys had phenomenal years, especially Bryce Huff. I feel like Huff is – a guy that we need to sign back for sure because um, he, he's some talent. You know, he's he's a guy that Douglas found and he, he has exceeded expectations and he's a fan favorite. So um, leaving Huff behind would just be the worst thing for the fan base um, and this team because Huff brings a different type of energy um, that no one really knows about in the NFL. Uh, no one really knows Bryce Huff. Only Jeff fans do, but he's still on top – rankings he's on rank but no one knows who he is um and, and i think he needs to get more opportunities as years come around um and talent we need to keep on the team and young talent um to say the least so um and carl lawson obviously he hasn't lived up to the money that we thought you know he hasn't lived up to whatever we our expectations but he didn't make some plays here and there not the sacks that we expected him to get not the pass rushing but that happens kind of happens when he have an injury like he had so um, to come back from that. And then uh, Sheldon Rankings uh, is another honorable mention for me. Um, you know, he's kind of overlooked um, over the other guys that are on that line. Um, but Sheldon Rankings has been solid all year and he's consistent um, and getting to uh, where we need to. And then Greg Zerline is my last honorable mention. Look, we haven't had a kicker in a while, um, probably when we left Jason Myers. Um, and we've been on the up and down with a kicker. But Greg DeLega has come clutch for us multiple times he missed a couple obviously but i haven't seen a consistent kicker for the jets in a while um so um you know you have to give him some type of credit there absolutely rankings was definitely somebody who uh, i had just on the short list there as well so before we we're gonna go from 10 to 1 here and before we get into this it should be fun because ali and i don't really know our orders here so it'll be fun to see you know if we we have any carryover any guys who are the same at certain places so with that being said i'll get into it here number 10 for me is quincy williams a guy who I think, you know, arguably you could say was the Jets breakout player of the year, or at least one of them in the conversation. A guy who the Jets obviously claimed in 2021 prior to the regular season, just a week or two before. And, you know, he came in right away, made an impact, uh, has his splash plays, but, you know, was inconsistent. I think he was just a high variance type of a player in 2021, whereas 
this year you really saw him cut back on the mental errors and the mistakes, you know, just with his pursuit angles, his form as a tackler, which at times were still an issue. Like he did miss some tackles here and there, but overall, I mean, he was just such an improved player from 2021 to 2022. The guy who in the second year of the system, I think you saw him just play with more comfort, uh, confidence and, you know, his natural ability, it's really all there, right? You look at the guy's speed, athletically speaking, you look at just the tackling power that he can bring at the point of attack. I mean, he's extremely physical, tough downhill. And as much as anything, I mean, just the energy that he plays with. I mean, it's, it, he's got a tenacity to him that you got to love and respect. Um, he finished the year with 106 tackles, 12 of which were for loss, three sacks. The final three games of the year, he had 10 tackles in each game. And that didn't even uh, – well, that wasn't even his best of the year. I mean, he had 14 in, in the win over Green Bay. So – Quincy, you know, tremendous year for him, in my opinion, um, still can, you know, I think minimize some of the mental errors moving forward, but, you know, a guy with a lot of potential and upside, and I think it's a big free agent decision for the Jets. Yeah, um, for me, it's Bam Knight at uh, number 10. Um, when Brees Hall went down, we didn't know who what running back is going to come up. Michael Carter. A lot of people are not a fan of Michael Carter. A lot of people are. You know, it's 50-50 with the fan base of how he plays. But Bam Knight just came out of nowhere. Um, and um, you saw him explosiveness. Um, you know, you saw his catching ability and yards after catch. Um, and just how valuable of a piece he was for the offense, especially when Brees Hall went down completely. Obviously, he's not a Brees Hall talent um, running back, but he did enough to show, impress people. Um, he was out there making plays and he was moving the chains for us. And that's kind of all you can ask for, for a running back that was undrafted and not even looked at from any team. So, um, you know, I feel like Bam Knight deserves the recognition because the Jets have pretty decent running backs now um, um, with stacked running backs. So with Bam Knight coming into the mix, um, it didn't really make sense of James Robinson trade. I don't know what's going to go happen with that, but uh, Bam Knight, I don't think anyone thought he was going to make such an impact, um, but I feel like he definitely needs to know that, you know, he could make some plays and, you know, if someone goes down, he could pop in and make some plays for the Jets and spark them. Definitely. His number draft free agent, Bam, did a great job as a rookie. Now, for me, number nine, Michael Carter the second. I think, you know, like I said, Quincy was probably the biggest breakout, and I think Carter, you know, not just along this defense, but this entire Jets team, I think he's probably the most underrated player. You know, you just look at um, the fact that there's a fifth round rookie in 2021. He came in and started from the jump at a really hard position there in the slot. Um, you know, he, he always has had the speed. He can, you know, rush the passer. He can play the run. He's a good tackler. But I think what we needed to see from him in year two, he delivered with in, in terms of just ball production, you know, pass breakups, uh, interceptions. I mean, he finished the year with nine passes defended and then two interceptions. So I think Carter – really established himself as one of the top slot corners in the NFL this year, a guy who really completes this trio, right? I mean, he kind of just naturally falls under the radar with Sauce and DJ Reed, but I think MC2 is a young player at 23 years old this year who did a tremendous job for this Jets defense and was one of the most consistent, you know, best players this Jets football team had this year. Well, that's a good one. Um, for nine, I have Quincy Williams. Uh, you have him at 10, but I have him at nine just because – uh, the impact on the field um, that Quincy Williams had was just insane. Um, he was sparked the uh, defense when they needed to play. Um, his speed and um, and his ability to get and pursue whoever had the ball um, was very impressive. Um, and um, obviously, he's not his brother like player, um, but Quincy is close. Um, and you know, there's a lot to clean up with him because there's a lot of dirty plays that he does has done before. Um, there's a lot of unusual hits that he's done, but, um, you know, he still is a baller. He's still a guy that um, the Jets can build off of, and he can learn as he goes within Robert Salah's defense. And who's best to teach him is Robert Salah, who's a defensive-minded coach um, and a mastermind in defense. So um, he's learning how to become a leader on the defense. And with Quincy Williams, when he's on the field, he's fun to watch. Every time you watch him, he pa passes the eye, touch, eye test because you see him just consistently make plays um, and you don't really see many errors on the field on the first eye test. When you're watching, when you watch film afterwards, yeah, you see a lot of different things. But when you are watching Quincy Williams, you're like, he's a good player and who is he? Because a lot of people don't know about him. Like a lot of the Jets underrated guys that we talked about, 
that not many people know about. But Quincy Williams is a guy that stepped up and delivered. Absolutely. So for me here now at number eight, I'm going to go with John Franklin Myers. I think a guy who just yet again had a very you know solid year for the Jets. He, really even better than a solid year. I would say he was very good. Um, you know, his versatility was on display more this year in comparison to 21. I think just having more, you know, edge depth kind of gave him opportunities on third downs, two minute situations or just obvious passing plays to really rush from the inside. And obviously he had five sacks, 19 quarterback hits this year. Um, and then you just look at what he did on the edge as well. I think early downs he, as a run defender, setting the edge, he's obviously got a ton of size and physicality to him. And JFM, I think, is a guy who's just very stout week to week for this team over the last three years now and still only 26 years old. So I think JFM moving forward is, you know, an intricate piece of this Jets defensive front and this unit as a whole remaining in the top five. So JFM, you know, three consecutive really good years for the Jets. Yeah, um, at eight, um, he should have been – if he didn't get hurt, he probably would be more up in the rankings as Elijah Vera Tucker. Um, when he went down, uh, you saw that offensive line go decline. Um, and that offensive line didn't know what to do after Elijah Vera Tucker. And you saw why they traded for him. You know, that's why they made the effort to get him is because he succeeded and played at an efficient level and different positions. And um, he was holding his ground. He was doing whatever he can to keep that offensive line straight and um losing him is when we went down the drain um and the pocket would collapse the quarterback doesn't have time and um that's kind of when our season went down the drain <laughs> as well so um you know tucker is a guy who's going to come back next year we're going to have him uh we obviously have to look at the offensive line a little bit more but having a piece like tucker on the team and on, on that offensive line is huge for the jets just because um the capability of someone if someone goes down at an important position on that line he can move around um he's a guy that can uh play multiple posi multiple positions and play very well at it um and during the draft process everyone was raving about him because there's a reason that everyone's raving about him is because he can be he exceeded uh expectations and we what we thought um and um having him back next year uh, hopefully fully healthy fully ready to go will be huge for whatever quarterback is here uh, that's coming back because um, Tucker Tucker was an all-pro, you know, offensive lineman. Easily. I'm with you on that. And for me, number seven here, C.J. Mosley. I think a guy who is definitely just had his best year as a Jet. There's really no doubt about that. Earned second team all-pro, is going to the Pro Bowl, one of four Pro Bowlers for the Jets. Um, just a, a core presence with his leadership ability, his intangibles, his smarts to the Jets defense there. I mean, just a physical player with that size. And I'll be honest, I even think for a guy who was 30 years old this year, like he moved pretty well, you know, in a position where speed and youth is really the name of the game. I mean, he covered ground from sideline to sideline pretty well. Um, recorded 158 tackles, seven passes defended, five tackles for loss, and had eight games of double-digit tackles. So I think CJ, another guy who was just very consistent for this Jets defense and, or, you know, very deserving of all the honors that he got, you know, for his strong play for the Jets this year. Yeah, seven, I have Brees Hall. Um, you know, again, he would probably be top three, like Vera Tucker, um, if he played the full season. But Brees Hall, man, he was a game changer. Um, he, I mean, we couldn't probably won the Broncos game if he didn't have that touchdown before he went down. Um, you know, Brees Hall was the game changer for this team. And if both of those guys probably stayed healthy, we'd probably be in the playoffs right now. Um, and I truly believe that because Brees Hall was just a guy that could – break one for 70 yard touchdown at any point of the game um and that's kind of what we were missing on uh for this team because Brees Hall is you know the impact was felt you know and LaFleur being fired as well that we talked about in another video is you know LaFleur didn't know what to do after Brees Hall because you know if there was a pressure situation just hand it off to Brees Hall he'll break one um but that wasn't an option anymore and um you know, but knowing that we have such a great player ready to go next year, and apparently his um, rehab has been pretty well and pretty on schedule, and um, it's actually been better, is really good for the Jets because, um, and it kind of seems like an odd injury that he had because usually those type of injuries take a while to adjust, but it's going pretty well for him. So hopefully he's good for the season uh, for training camp and he can be ready to go because 
when he's on the field, it's imp- impactful. And it was fun to watch the first couple of games of the season and watching him just run. Um, and, you know, you know, even his catching ability was insane. And, you know, he's not the fastest guy in the world, but um, he was just shifty. He was he's, he was able to do whatever he wanted to on the defense and no one would be able to stop him. So, um, you know, ha- losing him was a huge deal. And obviously he probably would be rookie of the year candidate if he was still um, he played all year. So um, having a guy like Brees Hall um, is just insane. I've got Brees at six here, so we'll keep this short. I mean, I think you really said all the correct points there. I mean, he was running away with the offensive rookie of the year. It was just, it was special. I feel like the Jets haven't had a player, a skill position player on offense like that in so long. And what he was coming in and doing and just heating up, unfortunately, is that was just an, like you said, I mean, those injuries are usually, they're like non contact. And that was just so bizarre how that all went down. But like you said, he's obviously doing well in his rehab and recovery. So hopefully, you know, for the start of training camp, he's out there. You know, you just look at the production in seven games. He had 681 all-purpose yards. And that was with him, you know, leaving before halftime of that Broncos game. Had 463 on the ground, four touchdowns, and then 19 catches. Like you said, his receiving ability, 218 yards and a receiving touchdown as well. And I just think the complete skill set with his size and speed, you look at his vision uh, in that before scheme, like you said, and that one cut ability in that outside zone scheme, which hopefully the Jets with their new offensive coordinator, you know, keep that intact for Brees and, you know, just such a complete player, so much fun to watch. And like you said, his youth still only being 21 years old, I think gives him a leg up just in this re- recovery process and when, you know, he'll return for the Jets. So for me at number five, um, you know, or actually you could go with number six, my fault. <laughs> yeah, um, I had uh, Justin Hardy. Um, you know, he's a pro bowler. Uh, you didn't even have him on your top 10, but uh, I think the Hardy's impact was, you know, on and off the field, very important for the Jets team. Um, he's a captain for a reason and he's consistent and there are sometimes some teams where you know he would make that clutch tackle he would make that um, you know he was just consistent all year and consistency is what helps a team win games uh, no matter what position you are and you know obviously we're inconsistent in different positions but um, you know with his position he was ready to go every play he was ready to do whatever he can and um you know, he's a captain for a reason. He's a leader and one of the best special teamers in the NFL. So um, for a reason. So having him on the team is definitely um, important. And just that's why he had to be on the list, just because he made the Pro Bowl. He's in there and he's ready to go. And um, he's just the consistency is key. Absolutely. So for me, at number five here, I have Elijah Barrett Tucker. And I know it's it's probably a bit rich considering the talent the Jets had this year and the fact that he only played in seven games. But what you really said before, I think just it really uh, summarizes it all perfectly. I mean, this guy's impact. He was playing uh, along with Brees really at not only Pro Bowl, but all pro caliber levels of football, as Joe Douglas said there in the middle of the season at his press conference after they got hurt. I mean, ABT really took that second year leap that I think we all wanted to see just the utter dominance, the consistency, the availability for this offensive line, those first seven games. I mean, you talk about a guy with the versatility, but not only that, you you know, you can have all the positional flexibility in the world, but are you willing to do it? And and in tough situations, which ABT did, obviously, I mean, in the offseason, he transitioned there from left guard to right guard with Lake and Tomlinson addition. Then at right guard after three games with all the injuries, I mean, he goes out to left tackle. <laughs> Next week, right tackle. I mean, it's hard to put into words just the value that ABT brought to this team. And for that reason alone, you know, I, I felt like I had to have him and Brees here at five and six. Yeah, um, I have CJ Mosley at five. Um, obviously, we finally saw a full season out of CJ Mosley, uh, which is very important for us. Um, just for mentally purposes, because we, we paid him so much money. We never really saw what he could do. Um, people were losing hope on him, and he finally made an impact for the Jets. Obviously, he, there were some plays that he made some bonehead decisions. Um, uh, there were some plays where he would just give up. Um, but overall, during the season, I've seen him make plays. I made him make clutch tackles um, and be consistent. And that's why he was a Pro Bowl this year. And um you know that type of player deserves a reward um obviously there's a big decision if they want to keep him and because he's a cap uh, casualty for the Jets so he could be cut who knows um but CJ Mosley is a guy that I feel Salah loves and a guy that if you want a defense to stand you need that linebacker crew to be solid and CJ Mosley is solid uh with Quincy Williams as well so you never know if they keep him um, just because of that leadership perspective, the 
um, just a consistent perspective because we saw what he could do even after those injuries. Um, he can still be play at a high level. So, I mean, you said it earlier, um, you know, most with his stats, Mosley is a solid player and um, uh, there's a big decision coming up for the Jets. For sure. So now our, our top four here, I think it's pretty obvious who they're going to be. Uh, it's just a matter of where we have them. So this should be fun. Uh, number four, I got DJ Reed. I think you're looking at a guy who, honestly, he might be the best free agent signing the Jets have had in how long? I mean, you think, and the Jets have been a team that's traditionally spent a lot of money in free agency and have just struck on the, the wrong players time and time again. And they finally, with DJ Reed here, got one right. Um, you know, he, he, it's a popularity contest with the Pro Bowl and all po- all Pro votes. So, in that sense, I mean, he kind of got snubbed, in my honest opinion. I think he was more than deserving of both of those honors. Um, you look, I mean, he came in this year and played 100% of defensive snaps. Uh, I mean, in every game, he was, you know, out there for this team. He was a leader. I think his emotion, you know, just the competitiveness that he plays with. And I think that's on display when you just watch his ability as a tackler. I mean, he, he wrapped up, you know, 80 total tackles this year for a corner, which I think speaks volumes. Um, had an interception and had 12 passes defended as well. And, I mean, just this trio of Sauce, DJ, MC2, I mean, it's really exciting. DJ at that right corner position is obviously, you know, pivotal in that. Guy who, you know, just turned 26 years old a couple months ago, I think should really be hitting his prime. Um, I mean, really, DJ was absolutely awesome for the Jets in 2022. No other way to say it. Yeah, I have DJ Reed at 4-2. Um, you know, he's a guy who played lockdown defense all year. And um, obviously you have Sauce Gardner who probably is on our top three as well at some point um you know that tandem was insane this year that um they were locked down they were ready to go um they need some safety help but um the cornerbacks did what they had to do um top receivers were on the field um and they were locking them down um and dj reed is someone that obviously was snubbed um you know he's a guy that hasn't got the recognition that he deserves because he has played lights out um, they're gonna probably gonna take the bigger name players uh, rather than DJ Reed, and that's kind of what it is. It's kind of what the NFL is nowadays. Um, but DJ Reed statistically was better than most of these guys, and um, when he got the chance, he would make a play. So I mean, yeah, I mean, there's nothing more to say about DJ Reed just because he's an absolute star for the Jets. Perfectly put. Now, at number three, I've got Garrett Wilson. I mean, you just look at what he just did as a rookie for the Jets. It was nothing short of special. Um, 83 catches, 1,103 yards, four touchdowns, had 300-yard games, had three other games over 90 receiving yards. You know, whether it's his route running ability, whether it's his ability to get yards after the catch, what he can do with the catch point as a contested catch player um, with this catch radius. I mean, there's just so much he can do. His versatility, both in the slot where he really played the start season and then he was the X receiver on the outside. You know, G-Dub came in and was just – so, so much fun to watch. Like I said with Brees earlier, you know, these young skill position players that the Jets have lacked for so long. I mean, these guys injected so much life into this Jets offense. And, you know, Garrett's production comes, you know, you look at those first four weeks Zach Wilson played. I mean, his production really, he wasn't getting the opportunities as much as anything. So I think it makes his, you know, final stat line at the end of the year that much more impressive. And in my opinion, you know, like we were saying, Brees was running away with offensive rookie of the year. But I think, you know, obviously after his injury, to me, it should be Garrett winning the offensive rookie of the year. And uh, I think his production, you know, the 83 catches, 1,103 yards, to me that all just speaks for itself. And I, I think he's going to be a special player for the Jets for a long time. Yeah, I have Garrett Wilson at three as well. Um, you know, you have a wide receiver one out of him. And um, the fact that he worked with three quarterbacks as a rookie, um, he worked with play calling that wasn't great. Um, and still was able to eclipse 1,000 yards um, is impressive for any receiver. And, um, you know, we haven't seen a receiver like this for a very long time, um, and he broke some records uh, for us. So, um, you know, Garrett Wilson is a type of player, you know, finally we went high up and got an actual receiver, um, and, you know, we hit it. Uh, Joe Douglas hit, hit the player. You know, he got him. He's got a star in the making and a number one wide receiver in the making. Whoever the quarterback is would love Garrett Wilson on their team because um, Wilson has a jilly. He has yards after catch. His ability is insane. Um, his catching ability is amazing, and his shiftiness is something that is off the charts. Um, he's a guy that can, you know, we saw with Mike White make plays, Zach Wilson make plays, uh, Joe Flacco, and that's a huge deal because 
working with three quarterbacks as a rookie is very difficult because you have to be on the same page with that. And there was frustrations at times, but he still produced. He still was making plays um, and moving the ball, moving the chains, and doing whatever he can to win the football game um, and make those big type plays for the Jets to have a chance to win football games. So, um, and you also got to see um, on camera, we also saw his leadership perspective of it. He was a rookie who was making leadership stuff. Um, you know, you saw him pumping up Zach Wilson when he was through like three picks that one game. And, you know, that's a huge thing for a rookie to come in. And, um, you know, the Jets love leadership. Joe Douglas love leadership. And Garrett Wilson is everything from leadership to a playmaker. Absolutely. So number two here, I've got Sauce Gardner. I mean, similar to Garrett and Brees. I mean, just a rookie who came in. And honestly, I would say, and Gardner's accolades back it up. I mean, he had a generational type of rookie year. You know, it's I think it's 41 years since a rookie corner had first team all pro honors, which obviously he earned that. I think the best corner in the NFL this year. And, you know, he got a pro ball nod. And similar to Garrett and like we were saying with Brees, you know, early in the season, to me, Sauce should be the defensive rookie of the year. I mean, he, he was absolutely dominant. You look at the fact he led the NFL and passes defended with 20 in 17 games for the Jets this year. Sauce broke up a pass in 12 of those games. Um, he had a high of four in that Seahawks game, and he recorded three pass breakups in two different games. I mean, had two interceptions, 75 total tackles. I think we really got to see it all, right? The height, the length, the speed, the quickness, and just how competitive he is as much as anything. Sauce is, you know, one exciting player who I think – brings a presence about him that the Jets have really lacked for so long, a CEO type of just uh, way about himself, a swagger, the way that he goes about his business. And Sauce, I mean, he is one exciting player that, you know, I'm so pumped as a Jet. Yeah, number two, I have Quinn Williams. Um, I put him there. There's a reason why is because, yes, um, he was he had a lot of injuries. A lot of people were down on him. And he made his presence felt this year. Um, you know, he's dominant on every single snap. Um, and, you know, you can see the stat sheet. You can see the film. He was effective in every way. Um, you know, he recorded 12 sacks on the season. Um, and, you know, what else can we ask for him? Um, is because the Jets defense was on the field so much um, that how much he's going to get exhausted that like every single player would. But he would still make plays for us. He would still make tackles. He would put pressure on the quarterbacks and try to give us a chance to win. Um, and he was just fun to watch all year with his um, sack dances, whatever it is. Um, he was there to play football. Um, and, you know, now it comes to the time where are we going to pay him? Hell yeah, you got to pay him. Um, you know, he's a type of player you just can't lose. Um, and if that's risking getting rid of C.J. Mosey or whatever it is, you do it because Quinton Williams is a type of player you just can't find it nowadays um, that that effective on defense. And those star players are what make a championship team um, happen. So with Quinton Williams, he's definitely going to be seeking a longer contract. They got to get it done with him because he's definitely earned it. He has. And I've got Quinton at number one here myself. I mean, you just look at him in 2022, one of the best players in football. Um, obviously are in the Jets, Curtis Martin, team MVP, rightfully so. And you said, obviously, the 12 sacks, and he had 71 total pressures, which is just astronomical. I mean, I said before the season, uh, a breakout year for me for Quinn would have been 10 sacks and 50 pressures. I mean, he went above and beyond that. I mean, he was utterly dominant against both the pass and the run. And just beyond the stat sheet, I mean, his impact was consistently felt for this Jets defense. I mean, he's a pivotal part why they made the jump from 32 to 4 in, in the overall rankings from 21 to 22. And I think you just said it best there. I mean, he should be really in line now to get probably the biggest contract in the history of the Jets franchise this offseason. Yeah, uh, for sure. And then number one for me is Sauce Gardner. Um, it's very rare to see what Sauce Gardner did, man. It is very rare. And to see a rookie already become the, one of the best corners in the NFL is nuts. You know, he put clamps on the best wide receivers in the league. Um, and he went up against anyone who – he just shut everyone up all season. You know, there was guys criticizing him of holding or whatever it is, um, of him doing stupid stuff. But, you know, every cornerback does it, and he pretty much doesn't really do much than the other cornerbacks in the league that are considered top tier. Um, you know, Sauce Gardner has skill. He has playmaking ability. 
Um, and you know, he's a pro bowler as a rookie. He's an all pro as a rookie, and he's going to get better and better as experience goes. And, um, you know, he has a chance of winning defensive rookie of the year. Um, you know, he has so many opportunities this year and he won so many awards and, you know, he's humble about it. You know, he's, he's more of, Oh, I'm from Detroit and all this. He has a backstory. Um, and that's impressive for any fan, you know, just to see what he's done for the Jets and how a lot of people were like, why do we draft a cornerback with our pick? Um, this is why, because he impacted the game completely. We could have been blown out by 40. Instead, we're blown out by 20. So uh, because of those those plays that he makes from the end zone, um, you know, making those defensive plays and deflections or interceptions or whatever it is, he was there and he was ready to play football. And, um, you know, he's being compared to Daryl Rivas, um, which is huge. You know, that's a big comparison, but he earns it. You know, he earns it because the way he plays is extraordinary and, you know, it's fun to watch and, you know, the Jets don't have to pay him yet, but he's when he comes down to paying him, uh, he's going to ask for a big contract because Sauce Gardner is legit. He is special. So I hope you all enjoyed this one, Jets fans. Ali and I going over our top 10 Jets from 2022. Leave your comments below on any agreements, disagreements, players that, you know, you felt we should have maybe mentioned and, you know, your potential top 10 list from the Jets this year. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Ali and I will be back with some more Fireside Jets content on the way. And have a great day, Jets Nation.